NASA's new risky plan to save us from Yellowstone supervolcano eruption could trigger massive volcanic eruption and a volcanic winter because of the ash and everything else that will be coming out of there. It will be a devastating event that will be felt worldwide. Now we're going into this because as you can see here, the Yellowstone supervolcano has calderas that will be massive compared to everything else we have witnessed so far. And experts say that we're about due for something out of Yellowstone. The last time it erupted was over 640,000 years ago. And this is an upcoming map. You can see worldwide things. The big one there in North America is Yellowstone. And the uh, one that was in Europe, the Santorini volcano, was thought to be the eruption that took place at the time of the exodus from Egypt. Let's take a look at the comparison between, for example, Mount St. Helens all the way to the right and Yellowstone, the last two to the left. As you can see, huge difference, devastating catastrophe would be taking place. NASA's risky plan to save us from Yellowstone eruption could trigger a massive eruption of its own. Yellowstone is a supervolcano. Government officials have been closely monitoring the activity in the recent Yellowstone caldera. Scientists at NASA have now come up with an increasingly incredibly risky plan in order to save the United States from the supervolcano. The NASA scientist has spoken out about a true threat of supervolcanoes and the risky methods that could be used to prevent a devastating eruption. Lying beneath the tranquil and beautiful settings of Yellowstone National Park lies the enormous magma chamber called the caldera. The caldera is responsible for the geysers and the hot springs that define the area. However, for scientists at NASA, it's also one of the greatest natural threats to human civilization as we know it. It's, it will affect the whole world if Yellowstone erupts. Brian Wilcox, a former member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, shared a report on the natural hazard that had not been since outside of the agency until now. Following an article published by BBC about supervolcanoes last month, a group of NASA researchers got in touch with the media to share a report previously unseen outside the space agency. It concerned the threat Yellowstone poses and what NASA hypothesized could possibly be done about it. Quote, I was a member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studies ways for NASA to defend the planet from asteroids and comets. This is what Brian Wilcox explained. He's from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, at the California Institute of Technology. He explained, I came to the conclusion during that study that the supervolcano threat is substantially greater than the asteroid or comet threat. Yellowstone currently leaks about 60 to 70 percent of its heat into the atmosphere through steam water, which seeps into the magma chamber through cracks while the rest of the heat builds up as magma and dissolves into volatile gases. Okay, this is the theory of the water on top of the earth, uh, filling through, going through the cracks, and that's the water that comes back up from the magma chamber, spouting it out. But uh, recently, one of my previous videos having to do with a huge underwater lake, uh, a huge ocean, underneath the, the earth mantle that is three times the amount of all the water on the earth's oceans today three times as much so it could be that that water is the water that's coming out being spouted from yellowstone having nothing to do with the rainwater 
that's uh, seeping into the cracks of Yellowstone. So that makes more sense. Now the heat and pressure from Yellowstone will reach the threshold, they say, meaning an explosion is inevitable. So at one point very soon, Yellowstone will explode. One of my priests here in Greece, the Orthodox Christian Church, claims that it could be that that could be what will eventually be part of the end time scenario being played out, that Yellowstone could be part of all this, which will of course be devastating for all of mankind because it will be a, a volcanic winter with the ash cloud and the temperature and the gases and everything. Now, when NASA scientists considered the fact that a supervolcano's eruption would plunge the earth into a volcanic winter, Destroying most sources of food, starvation would then become a real possibility. Food reserves would only last about 74 days, according to the United Nations, after an eruption of a supervolcano like that under Yellowstone. That's just about, uh, not even, uh, well, about uh, two and a half months. And they have devised a risky plan that could end up blowing up in their faces, literally. Wilcox hypothesized that if enough heat was removed from Yellowstone and the temperature of the supervolcano dropped, it would never erupt, he says. But he wants to see a 35% decrease in temperature and how to achieve that is really incredibly risky. One possibility is to simply increase the amount of water in the supervolcano. As it turns to steam, the water could release the heat into the atmosphere, making global warming alarmists tremble because all this heat would go into the atmosphere. Wilcox says, building a big aqueduct uphill into a mountainous region that would be both costly and difficult, and people don't want their water spent that way. People are desperate for water all over the world, and so a major infrastructure project where the only way the water is used is to cool down a supervolcano would be very controversial, he says. So NASA came up with an alternative idea. They believe the most viable solution could be to drill up to 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano and pump down water at high pressure. Now, how are you going to drill into a, 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 an active volcano? That's, why, that's my question. <laughs> the volcano is active and it's hot. It's giving, it's giving earthquakes, uh, record amounts of thousands of earthquakes since June. Um, how are you going to drill into the volcano? And how are you going to? How do you know you're going to be drilling into? I, I assume they're going to be drilling very close to the magma chambers, which are found to be four times bigger than they thought originally. So uh, it's like a, it's it's like you're drilling into a balloon. It's going to explode in your face. The circulation water, he says, would return at a temperature of about 350 degrees centigrade. That's 662 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. That's slowly, day by day, extracting heat from the volcano, he says. And while such a project would come at an estimated cost of about $3.46 billion, it comes with an exciting and, and, and enticing catch which could convince politicians and taxpayers to make the investment. Wilcox says Yellowstone currently leaks around 6 gigawatts in heat. Um, so through drilling in this way, it could be used to create a geothermal plant, which German, uh, generates electric power and extremely competitive prices of about 0 0.10 cents, 10 cents, or, you know, okay, 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Quote, you would have to give the geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhere deeper and use hotter, hotter water than they would usually uh, use. You would uh, pay back your initial investment and get electricity which can power the surrounding area for a period of potentially tens of thousands of years, he says. And the long-term benefit is that you prevent a future supervolcanic eruption which would devastate humanity. Of course, drilling into a supervolcano comes with its own risks, as we said before, and he says it here as well, like the eruption that scientists are desperate to prevent. Triggering, triggering an eruption by drilling would be disastrous. <laughs> You know, this is amazing what these people come up with, you know. 
Wilcock says the most important thing with this is to do no the most important thing is to, to, to do no harm. Okay, of course you, you don't want to do but you're gonna drill into the volcano. You're definitely gonna do a lot of harm. Definitely. Okay, so he says if you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try and, try and cool it from there, this would be very risky. This could make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture. And you might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released, of course. And these, uh, the new magma chambers that have just now been, re, um, uh, uh, been discovered. So you're gonna drill somewhere and it could be another magma chamber that you didn't know was there. How do you know when you're drilling like a, a blind mole? You don't know what's under the surface of the earth. You're drilling in this whole area. The whole area is the caldera. The whole area of uh, Yellowstone there that the people go to visit is the caldera. For miles around is the caldera. You know, the, the, the hole of the volcano. Where could they, they could, anywhere they drill is magma chamber down there. So of course it's risky. He says the cooling of Yellowstone in this manner would also take tens of thousands of years, but it is a plan that scientists at NASA are considering for every supervolcano on Earth. Okay, so at least, okay, they're drilling and they're going to put in um, and try and have geothermal um, uh, power. That's great. At least they're not, because before this, they had the other idea of nuking it. <laughs> nuking it! Okay, this is from Humans Are Free. And I'll leave a link below for you for this. Okay, so here you have a diagram of the volume of erupted volcanic ash and pumice in terms of the original volume of molten rock released. All the way to the right, you have Mount St. Helens that blew in 1980. And then you have Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines that blew in 1991, which is a lot bigger. It's about 10 times bigger than Mount St. Helens. And then you have another one, which was about five times bigger than Pinatubo, which was Mount Krakatau, Indonesia, which blew in 1883. And then after that, you have in the middle of the diagram, Mount Tambora, Indonesia, which blew in 1815. Then you have Long Valley, USA. That's also a dangerous part of what is expected to blow. The Long Valley volcano, nobody's giving uh, any attention to that. And then you have Yellowstone, which blew 0.64 million years ago. And then you have Yellowstone again, USA, which blew 2.1 million years ago. So you can see how huge Yellowstone is compared to uh, Pinatumbo in the Philippines of 1991 or even Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a drop in the bucket compared to Yellowstone. So this is huge destruction, huge destruction. But they've got to do something. Uh, hopefully, whatever they find to do, God will enlighten them so that it's not going to be risky for the rest of the world. I'll leave links below for you for this.